Okay, we'll start with this. Former champion Antonio Tarver expects Terence Crawford to perform better against Canelio than Jermel Cherlo did. And I happen to agree. With Terence Crawford, it's the little things, the subtleties, where it's Jermel. Jermel is a more basic and simple fighter. That's why Tarver expects Crawford to be more competitive than Cherlo if he steps in the ring with Canelo. Canelo showed that anyone moving up will have a problem. And I thought early on, Crawford would be the type of guy with his offensive weaponry. I'm not sure, though, moving up with that much weight would impact Crawford the same way as it did Cherlo. He would be stronger, more powerful, and I think being in the ring with a guy like that will make you fight more different, Tarver told Betway. It would be a lot more heated than the Charlo fight because Terence Crawford is one of those guys who means what he says. He isn't there tapping. He's standing on everything he says, and you have to respect fighters like that. A true fighter with a true fighter's psychology. Then yeah, of course money is a part of it. It's prize fighting, and he's a fucking prize fighter so how could it not be but he is more than just a prize fighter that warrior spirit that means spirit it would be a lot more heated than the charlo fight because terence crawford is one of those guys who means what he says he isn't there tapping he's standing on everything he says and you have to respect fighters like that i believe he would definitely have to get used to and adjusted to the natural strength and power of Canelo, and that's always the X factor, power. The reason I give Terence Crawford decent odds against Canelo is because it's not adjusting to that power or absorbing that power, it's being able to work around it. Terence has got faster feet than Canelo Alvarez. I believe he's got faster hands. His movements are a lot more subtle than a lot of these guys. That's what makes him dangerous. Terence's brand of movement versus Jermel's brand of movement. Jermel is more basic, basic, moving lateral to create space and try and set traps. Those are broad strokes. With Terence, the movements are shorter and sharper. As it pertains to Canelo, some people that think he's on the slide, Antonio doesn't agree. No, because activity is the best thing for a fighter. Canelo's going to get two or three fights per year, and he's fighting guys coming off 15-month layoffs. They're never going to be on top of their game. If there's anything I'd like to see is these PBC fighters getting a lot more active. They need repetition and get in there and put everything on the line. That's how you stay sharp, Tarver said. Back in my career, I slowed down in the last two or three years of my career. I was begging for fights to try to stay active, but the nature of the business doesn't allow you to. If I could urge any promoter coming into the game, it's get your fighters active. It has to be said with those fighters coming in with their long layoffs, their backs are against the wall already. They're coming into fights unprepared because they just haven't been active enough. If you fight in a major fight, you shouldn't have a six or seven month layoff going into that fight, no. And some of those guys are coming for more than a year where they haven't competed at the highest level. So if you don't use what you've got, you lose what you've got. How many times have we had that conversation, whether it's budget constraints or just fighters that don't want to fight, boxers that don't want to box? PBC fighters are far too inactive. Idle hands do the devil's work, and too much time being idle for a fighter, well, that extinguishes fire in the belly on top of there being these long stretches from one fight to the next, that's more time to eat because you're not training for anything, so you end up ballooning in weight between fights, and when you do get a fight, your camps are more like fat camps fat. than training camps. You're just trying to make the weight. You're just coming for a check. That's how many people would describe Jermel Charlo's performance against Canelo Alvarez, and no, I don't think that would be the case with Terence Crawford. When Antonio Tarver highlights that Crawford's the kind of guy that means what he says and stands on it, I agree with that. And what makes the fight intriguing to me Man. is Terence's movements are a lot more calculated and coordinated, and these are small movements, not broad strokes like what you see from Jermel. His idea of lateral movement borders on running, outright running from your opponent as he walks you down, whereas Terence, Terence's movements are shorter. It's not just creating space, he's cutting different angles, staying within striking distance of you to get off punches and then move out. Then exit. That he doesn't need to be stronger than Canelo Alvarez if he's sharper. Those counter punches, those punches that you don't see, they can stun you, they can stop you in your tracks even if they don't knock you out. And Terence having more foot speed and more hand speed than Canelo Alvarez, being able to give him different looks out of 
different stances. That's what makes the fight attractive and appealing. That Terence Crawford, even though he's smaller and older, he is a far better boxer than anybody Canelo's fought in recent memory. Much more crafty and much more cerebral. That doesn't mean Terence wins. That doesn't mean Terence loses. That means it's intriguing. Canelo who doesn't throw as many punches as he used to. He doesn't throw as many combinations. These days, he goes for single shots, hard ones, loading up those shots. And in that half a second that you're loading up that shot, Terrence can counter you, then exit. Get out of the way. It's a fascinating fight, stylistically, based on Canelo's size and power and Terrence's boxing. I'd pay to see it. But alas, we may never know what would happen if you put today's Terrence Crawford in the ring with Canelo Alvarez because the latest news is Canelo is eyeing a fight with Jaime Munguia. You heard that right. The story is Canelo versus Munguia is reportedly possible for May while Canelo versus David Benavidez is being contemplated for September. It's claimed that Munguia will join Canelo's list of potential opponents if he wins a planned fight with John Ryder early next year in January, according to ESPN Mexico. And we knew for some time that Jaime was eyeing a fight with John Ryder for that who did it better comparison. Who did it better, Canelo or Jaime? John having acquitted himself well in front of a large number of Mexican fight fans, I'm sure they'd like to see him in the ring with Jaime Munguia. But don't get it in your head that because Canelo handled him easy that Jaime will handle him easy. Jaime is a far more flawed and basic fighter than Canelo is, and I could see Munguia versus Ryder being a firefight. A very entertaining fight, but a difficult one for Jaime. John is not the kind of fighter that just shows up for a check. John is durable, John is tough, John is a road warrior, and he'll test Jaime Munguia if he lets him. I can hear the boo birds now, angry that Canelo Alvarez may end up fighting Jaime on Cinco de Mayo instead of David Benavidez, rather the winner of Benavidez versus Andre, set to go down before this year is out, but it seems that David is part of the plan. You take care of Jaime on Cinco de Mayo, then you take care of David during Mexican Independence Day in order to optimize earnings, optimize revenue. This sequence of fights is no accident. If every single one of these fights were to come off in this order, Munguia versus Ryder in January, then Munguia versus Canelo in May, subsequently Canelo versus David Benavidez in September, these are very big fights, very big fights that would generate big revenue, believe it. A few boo birds aside, Canelo Alvarez is already the top draw in the sport in this country. They'd be more than happy to watch, more than happy to pay for hey. Munguia or Benavidez. Or both in this instance. Canelo Alvarez is on the hook with Al Heyman's PBC for another two fights. And these two fights could generate big, and I mean big revenue, for Canelo and the PBC. The interesting thing about it is that Canelo Alvarez's next two fights next year will reportedly both still be broadcast by Showtime in the USA. Despite Showtime Sports shutting down at the end of this year, this had previously been agreed as part of his deal with Al Heyman's PBC. So even though Showtime Boxing is all but kaput, they're still gonna be showing Canelo Alvarez's next two fights. And what's interesting about that is that Al Heyman is currently in the market for a new broadcast partner. But if Canelo's next two fights are gonna be on the old platform, he can't use them as bargaining chips on a new one. There's a lot of value in those two fights, and it was previously thought that that's Al Heyman's ace in the hole, that he still has two more fights with Canelo that he can use to get a broadcast deal with, say, an Amazon or somebody like that. A bargaining chip to get a broadcast deal because here you have the biggest draw in boxing, at least in America, and you could use that to finagle a situation. If it's true that Canelo's next two fights are gonna be on Showtime, I don't think Al can use them as bargaining chips to go with a, another broadcast partner. A strange arrangement. And you wonder if that applies to what's supposed to be the Crawford versus Spence rematch, Javante Davis's next fight, whoever it's against. Rumor has it that TGB, which is just another way of saying PBC, has two dates set aside already in February 
in Las Vegas. You figure that's probably for the Spence versus Crawford rematch and Javante Davis's next fight. If they already have those two dates set aside, is it because Showtime is going to be broadcasting those fights? Even though their sports wing is officially shutting down after this year, are those two fights also going to be shown on Showtime? Only time will tell, though if they are, it's a bit of a fruitless endeavor because those fights could have been used as bargaining chips also. They could have been used as bargaining chips to enter into a new broadcast deal with a new broadcast partner, those fights. I think we will get those answers shortly. As it pertains to Canelo Alvarez, I know a lot of people aren't gonna be happy that he's not facing the winner of Benavidez versus Andre in May because that would be ideal. And the hardcore fight fan in me, the purist would prefer that he fight David sooner than later. That's if David beats Demetrius, and most people think that he's going to. That, from a sporting sense, it makes no sense to further delay what could be the Canelo versus Benavidez fight in a sporting sense, but in a business sense, it makes all the sense in the world to fight Jaime on Cinco de Mayo and David in September. It's like printing money. Whether you like it or not, no matter how limited you or I might think Jaime Munguia is, if you put him in the ring with Canelo on Cinco de Mayo, that's gonna generate a lot of fucking money. It's a huge fight, bigger than the Plant fight, bigger than the Charlo fight. Capping it off with the David Benavidez fight in September, Mexico Mexican Independence Day, that would only amplify that fight's marquee value. So I see the strategy, even though most of us would like to see Canelo fight David sooner rather than later. The other angle of it is, if Canelo ends up fighting Jaime in May, what does David do for most of next year? What's he gonna do, sit out the entirety of the year, or most of it, practically most of it, waiting till September, waiting for Canelo? Who's he fight in the meantime, if he fights at all? That sequence of fights would generate a lot of money. Those are just the facts. As far as how the both of those fights play out, Jaime Munguia versus Canelo, David Benavidez versus Canelo. One fight is basically a layup for the other because the challenges are so similar between Jaime Munguia and David Benavidez. I mean, think about it. What's Jaime got and what's David got that Canelo doesn't? They're both taller than Canelo Alvarez, somewhat longer. They're both mid-range to inside pressure fighters with the difference being their temperance. Jaime Munguia fights in bursts. He'll stalk you, walk you down the way pressure fighters often do, but he fights in bursts. He throws salvos of punches, salvos, whereas David, he's a little bit more persistent. More durable too, I'd say, because David Benavidez is the naturally bigger guy, he at least has the appearance of being the more durable guy. I've seen Jaime Munguia in trouble before. I saw him in trouble at 154 pounds with Takeshi Nui, who gave him all he could handle. Hennis Dogen of Australia, he arguably beat Jaime Munguia. And more recently, the Sergei Didivienchenko fight, a very entertaining fight, but I remember Sergei hurting Jaime at least two or three times in that fight. So while they are similar, I do think Jaime is not as durable as David Benavidez. Though it's a marginal difference, the both of their base styles all those similarities, they both play right into Canelo Alvarez's hands. I think people forgot that Canelo Alvarez is an educated counterpuncher. And any guy that wants to stand in front of him, shoulder square, you're just making yourself that much easier to find. His last couple of fights, last couple of fighters that he's fought, they were movers, moving targets. You're talking about Callum Smith, who chose to lay on the ropes and survive Canelo. Billy Joe Saunders, he's a mover. So's Caleb Plant and Jermel Charlo. All he did was move in their fight. And all that really did was prolong it. Two guys like David and Jaime, guys that like to take the fight to the other guy with Canelo, that just makes them easier to find. Strange as this might sound, I think that Canelo Alvarez is more the boxer than the both of them, yeah, but he's also the bigger puncher. He's the shorter, sharper, more compact puncher out of all three guys, out of David, out of Jaime. They throw wider shots, sweeping hooks that can be countered. As strange as this might sound, Canelo may be noticeably smaller than they are. He doesn't take up as much space, but he packs a bigger, better punch. If I don't seem at all disheartened by this news that Canelo may end up fighting Jaime in May instead of David, provided David takes care of business with Demetrius. If I'm not disheartened, it's because when is Canelo Alvarez not delivered? 
His track record speaks for itself. If you want him in a big fight, he's gonna be in a big fight. Maybe not on your time, maybe not on mine, but he'll get around to it, and he does. That's why I'm not disheartened. That's why I'm not worried. I look at this sequence of fights, and what I see is that Canelo might be using Jaime Munguia as a layup for David Benavidez because they're very similar. We talked about the fiscal aspect of this sequence of fights, but the physical aspect, there's something to be addressed there. There are noticeable similarities between Munguia and Benavidez, and you could use one to prepare for the other. Make a lot of fucking money in the process. Jaime and David, they're both cut from the same cookie cutter. They're both mid-range to inside pressure guys with leaky defense. They are both swarmers. They are both hookers. They are both noticeably taller than Canelo Alvarez, longer than Canelo Alvarez, younger too. And I see one as a layup for the other. If I'm confident that Canelo Alvarez can beat the both of these guys, it's because Canelo Alvarez has been in there with better, trickier fighters than the both of these guys. The both of these guys are relatively easy to understand. Simple. They can both be caught. They can both be countered. They can both be hurt. I've seen Jaime hurt more than once, and David Benavidez, he got sat on his back pocket by Ronald Gavril. How many strong punchers has David Benavidez actually faced? Consider who he's fighting. He had a choice between David Morrell and Demetrius. Andre, and he didn't choose Demetrius by accident. A guy in his mid-30s who just moved up in weight and isn't big on power. David Benavidez hasn't fought very many, if any, strong punchers. I feel like Canelo might be the first. There's a reason for that. And how well has he been making that weight? Because I've been seeing images of him ahead of this Demetrius Andre fight, and the guy looks like he's walking around at 200 pounds. How well will he make the weight when the time comes to fight Canelo? What you do outside the ring between fights is your own business, but if between fights you're ballooning in weight, that might very well be your own business, but it's also your own fault. You're the one supposed to keep your weight in check, not Canelo. To the both of these guys, Canelo Alvarez would present a very tricky target, a hard target to hit with better head movement and upper body movement, better counter punching, better everything really than anyone, either of them, have fought so far. He's fought the Brits, he's fought the Eastern Europeans, he's fought the Americans. And now it's time to bring it home. At this stage in his career, based on this sequence of fights, I get the sense that Canelo wants to put a stamp on it and really establish himself as the greatest Mexican fighter Mexico has ever seen. If he actually does fight these two guys, what better way to do it? These are your domestic contemporaries, in a manner of speaking. Take care of them.